What's going on guys? So I am on the road and today's video is gonna be a really interesting video and I know this is one that everyone's been waiting for. And that is, what type of fuel economy can I expect to get on a relatively long road trip? So today's road trip is gonna take me two and a half hours outside of Corpus Christi. I'm gonna be heading to McAllen, Texas and it's a lot of long, fast roadways to get there. So most of the roads that will take me there are gonna have speed limits in excess of about 70 miles an hour. So I'll be able to really see what type of fuel economy this truck provides whenever you're on those types of roadways, which would be indicative of interstate and highway driving. Right now, the speed limit is 65. I'm gonna go ahead and accelerate up to that. Uh, right now, what's interesting is the range. So when I first left my house, it said I had 564 miles of range on this tank. And I've been driving now for about eight and a half miles. I reset my odometer right before, or at least my trip meter right before I started recording. Now I have 569 miles. So again, the, the computer and the vehicle is calculating all this, but it's also calculating it and making changes to it as the drive changes, as it changes from city driving to highway driving. And it's gonna be interesting to see how the range goes up or goes down based on the computer calibrating how I'm driving currently, because again, I'm gonna be on primarily highway roads and that's gonna truly dictate how my fuel economy looks over a long distance. Anyways, I'm gonna to talk to you about that. I'm gonna to talk to you about driving impressions. I'm gonna to talk to you about the 310 or 15 miles that I've put on the truck since we've got it and give you my overall impression so far. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so let's first talk about the past 315 miles or so I've put on this truck. Uh, because it was delivered to me from out of town, it already had about 50 to 60 miles on it when I received it. So now I have 372 miles on this truck. I've had a really good opportunity of driving this truck over all different types of road conditions, including some really, really bad washboard style roads to some very smooth, um, you know, inner city connection roads and arterial roads, as well as some highways. Uh, but the vast majority of the 300 miles I've put on this truck have been city driving. So not a lot of highway miles from me. So far, the truck has been absolutely wonderful to drive. Now, what this trip is also gonna tell me though, is how comfortable I think these seats are in the long run. Whenever you're driving around the city, these seats can definitely lean far more towards the firm side. GM seats have always felt that way to me. They've always felt a little too firm and not quite enough bolstering. Just, again, a very firm seat. But that can actually be a benefit on a long trip because the cushion's not gonna compress nearly as much and it's not gonna sag in like you might experience with some other vehicles. A good example of that would be like my Ford Fusion that I had. The seats felt great for city driving, but the minute you got on the highway and you got to your destination hours away, you realize that you've actually had to adjust your rear view mirror down several times as you sink into the seat. So having a well bolstered seat in terms of firmness can actually help prevent some of that. And it can alleviate some of the fatigue that you might feel because of that as well. Now on this trip, uh, every opportunity, again, I'm gonna try to use the cruise control feature because this does have radar cruise control on it. Yeah, I have to remember how to turn it on though. Let's see here. All right, gap adjustment is, I'll set it to its greatest. I'm gonna go ahead and get up to 70 miles an hour. One thing I don't like, and this was similar with the Escalade that I drove and the Yukon Denali, is where the top of the steering wheel here kind of blocks my view of the speedometer because of the layout that I have it in right now. So I'm actually relying on the heads up display to clue me in as to where I currently am going in terms of speed because I, I can't see the speedometer at all. It's right behind the top lip of the steering wheel. And because I'm trying to also keep an eye on fuel economy, I, uh, I don't wanna change my little gauge cluster here 
from the fuel economy settings to the speed settings, which I could do, but it is nice having the heads up display, which you can't see on camera, but I can see in front of me and it shows me that I'm going 70 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone. Currently have radar cruise control on, so it'll adapt to the speed of whatever vehicle's in front of me, then if that vehicle goes faster or slower, the truck again will follow suit and go faster or slower. If you are not used to South Texas, it is very, very flat out here. I mean, farmland flat, where you can literally see for miles and miles and miles, just nothing but flat. And it's really great for fuel economy testing in this type of an environment because it's very consistent. You don't have to worry about going up hills or over mountains or anything like that. But from a reality perspective for a lot of folks who live in an environment where there are a lot of geographical changes to the, the terrain, this might not be exactly what you would experience. And if you hear a rattling, I apologize for that. That's my uh, child seat in the back that just never stops rattling, no matter what I do to it. I stuff it with things. I try to get rid of all the rattles and they just never all seem to go away. You can see the camera rear view mirror that's currently on and how it's enhanced the lighting so you can see it easily. I mean, if you look at the rear view mirror, it looks like it's, it looks like it's right at dusk and you can see perfectly clear out the back. That's one thing I gotta admit about this truck that is leaps and bounds better than Ford in terms of camera. On the Ford product, the cameras all appear kind of dark at night and it's a little bit difficult to see at night. Whereas this, the camera on this truck is just absolutely incredible, all the cameras. Uh, whenever I have it on 360 degree camera mode, you can see all around the truck like it's bright daylight outside. They've done a great job of enhancing the brightness whenever you uh, you have the truck in surround camera mode. So fuel economy has dropped quite a bit. Uh, it's gone down to 24.1 miles per gallon currently. Uh, 26.2 miles per gallon is what the truck is averaging. And this is just kind of indicative of going this fast. I'm at 71 miles per hour. And yeah, you know, driving at this speed, the truck itself is not gonna get as good a fuel economy as if I drop down to like 65 miles per hour with a lot of the speed limit increases that you're seeing around Texas and around other parts of the country, it's really impacting fuel economy. You might get somewhere a little bit quicker, but you're burning a lot more fuel to get there. All right, let's talk a little bit about ride. The ride characteristics of this truck are pretty dang awesome, to be honest with you. Um, it's definitely more comfortable and smoother than the Explorer. Definitely, it's not even it's not even really in the same ballpark. Uh, this, to me, rides as smooth as my wife's Expedition, and that's really saying a lot because her Expedition is a luxury SUV. It's got fully independent suspension all the way around it, and it's designed to be smooth and comfortable. Platinum level trim. It is really, really a great road vehicle. And so far, this truck feels very similar to her Expedition. Um, her Expedition may be a little smoother at times under certain scenarios, but it's really, really hard to tell. What I like about this is the rear suspension. Typically, I hate the rear suspension on unloaded pickup trucks because when you go over bumps, it kind of bucks you. There's no real control there if you don't have weight in the bed because the springs are all unsprung. It's handling unsprung weight where they are at their full extension pretty much because they're designed to be able to carry their full capacity. And it's a lot of unsprung tension that you're dealing with, which can lead to kind of that bucking feel whenever you go over bumps. This truck doesn't do that. And I think it's partly because of the adaptive suspension that it has. It doesn't have air suspension, but it has the Denali adaptive suspension which essentially kind of scans the road and makes subtle adjustments to the dampening as you drive, which is really, really cool because you can tell. I did not really think it would be something that I could truly feel until owning this truck and experiencing how that back suspension stays planted and how when you go over bumps, even speed bumps, it feels as if the suspension is is managing that type of behavior so much better than most pickup trucks. It feels a lot better than the F-150s I've driven. 
it feels a heck of a lot better than my F450. But the rear suspension on this truck actually feels better and smoother over bumps than my wife's Expedition. And that's, that's pretty telling. Um, and you know, when I compare modern day pickup trucks in terms of their ride comfort and quality to luxury SUVs, they actually surpass a lot of SUVs in terms of ride comfort. And that's how I feel about this, even versus that limited Explorer we had, which was by all accounts a luxury SUV. The suspension feels very dialed in. It feels very connected to the road. It doesn't necessarily feel rough, but it does feel definitely more on the firm side. And the seats are still really comfortable. Um, not as comfortable as my King Ranch seats. And I would probably say that the King Ranch seats are significantly more comfortable at this point of the trip. Now, once I'm an hour into the trip, that might be a different story because regardless of what type of vehicle you have, seats start to, they start to find the little points in your body and your back that they can irritate. And this truck does not have the ultimate package, which means I don't have the massaging seats, um, which come in handy on my 450, my King Ranch. The massaging seats actually can help you a little bit. Um, I find myself turning them on after about two and a half, three hours of driving, and they work out a couple of those little knots that start to form. This truck doesn't have that, but it is gonna be interesting to see how the seats feel when I get you know, to the 50 mile mark or so, just so I can kind of get an idea of how comfortable they are. Anyways, we're gonna put a few more miles on this truck, then I'll be right back to talk to you again with some more updates. Okay, so real quickly, I just wanted to show you what the heads-up display looks like. Of course, you don't see that flickering in real life. It's just what you see on the camera. But yeah, you can see the speed you're going. And this is just the current display I have set up. I can change that to several different things. This is kind of four-wheel drive mode or angle articulation and such. That's just the speed limit. And this one is giving me the radar cruise control distance to the vehicle in front of me. It's actually very clear, very easy to see, even though it's relatively bright outside. Okay, welcome back. 72.6 miles that I've traveled total. Uh, I'm guessing about 50 miles since I last talked. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look. Fuel economy numbers. 29 miles per gallon. This trip so far, 27.5 Average speed, 62.4 miles an hour. Check this out. The range, 549 miles is my range. When I left about 80 miles ago after a full tank, my range was at 567 miles or 566, something like that. It's at 549. So do the math there. This is pretty insane what this truck gets in terms of fuel economy. Still a full tank, don't have to do anything with that. So I've traveled roughly, um, let's just say 72.6 since that's when I reset the odometer, even though that was about 10 miles or eight or 10 miles after I had actually filled up. But look at that, that is really, really crazy that it's still a full tank, 549 mile range. Absolutely insane. Anyways, we're gonna hit the road. I still got about, I'm guessing probably about 70 miles to go, 60, 70 miles to go. And we're gonna see what everything looks like once we get to our destination.
very interesting truck I'm passing, full of brand new GMC pickup trucks. There's an AT4, no Denali's on there though. I couldn't see if there were any Duramaxes in the pack either, but it's heading down to South Texas, so if you are a, a resident of McAllen, Texas, and you're looking for a new GMC truck, it looks like they're gonna have a little bit of a stock replenishment. That said, I'm at 96.3 miles, 26.8 miles per gallon, average speed of 63.4 miles an hour, which is interesting because pretty much the whole time now I've been going about 75, a little over that, now I'm going 75. Range, 524 miles. Again, the range on this truck is absolutely insane. Still showing a full tank, and you can probably see it here in the bottom corner of the uh, screen, the left bottom corner of the screen. I have the truck in two-wheel drive, so it's not in auto right now. It doesn't need to be because the roads are perfectly fine for two-wheel drive. Uh, this is really, really crazy. The fuel economy of this truck is kind of blowing me away. Now, what's interesting is, is that I feel I can get better than the 26.8 miles per gallon just driving in the city which is kind of insane. Uh, 26.8 right now is because I'm on a highway at a set speed and I'm at least gonna go the speed limit and maintain my speed with the flow of traffic. So what's crazy is that I can actually, you know, control my speed in a city a little bit more because I don't have it on cruise control and I can get better fuel economy in the city versus highway. Now if I, just drive the way everyone else drives in the city, of course, it's probably not gonna be that great. It's pretty crazy to think that I've gone almost 100 miles, 110 miles really for this tank, and I still have a full tank, that it hasn't even dropped down at all. That is absolutely insane. Okay, welcome back. 137.7 miles, averaging 27 miles per gallon, average speed 66.2 miles per hour, I have dropped down about an eighth of a tank, a little less than an eighth of a tank actually, it's still closer to full. Uh, range, 498 miles. So yeah, whenever you look at the range that I originally had of what, 567-ish miles, and now it's at 495, yet I've traveled over 138 miles with an average of 27 miles per gallon, yeah pretty crazy. This thing gets ridiculously good fuel economy for a full-size truck. From a comfort and ride, the ride of this truck is phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. It rides very, very smooth, incredibly compliant over all the different types of road conditions you might drive on. From a seating perspective, not the greatest. Not a big fan of the seat. Uh, my butt kind of hurts, you know, and it, it really shouldn't at this point. Uh, I think the bolstering is just a little bit too much on the firm side. I feel like it could be a bit more plush, a bit more cushioned. Okay, so I'm back. I'm here in a Whataburger parking lot, and I wanted to go over what the numbers look like at this point. So we're pretty much here. I'm only, I'm only about two miles away from my destination. Uh, the trip says 146.6 miles. It's actually closer to 156, but again, 146 since I've reset the trip uh, meter. 27.2 miles per gallon, average speed 62.8 miles per hour, which I kind of dispute that because the majority of this trip I was going 70 or above. Average fuel economy on the trip, I guess, total 27.9, not just for the trip, but since I filled up. Range, 492 miles. So I've traveled 156 miles roughly since I filled up, and the trip says... I have 492 miles remaining. If you look at the fuel, right at an eighth of a tank used, actually a little less than an eighth of a tank, that's pretty crazy. I mean, that is insanely crazy for a full-size pickup truck. Now, those of you with cars or trucks that are really focused on fuel economy, that might not be that insane. That may be just normal for you, whatever vehicle you drive, especially if you drive a hybrid, this is probably nothing special. But for a full-size pickup truck, 27.1 miles per gallon is crazy. That really is. 
you typically don't see that. Even when they were coming out with some uh, hybrid pickup trucks for a while, that was still a number that really wasn't achievable. You know, the EcoBoost from Ford was designed to give you pretty dang fuel, good fuel economy if you're on a longer trip. On my wife's vehicle, you may get 23 and a half, maybe, on a trip like this because, again, the weather is really ideal and, you know, you didn't have much headwind or, you know, crosswinds, nothing really hitting you that hard. But on a full-size pickup truck, 27.1 is really, really phenomenal. Anyways, yeah, I, I still have to drive back. Uh, that's another two and a half hour drive and I'll be able to give you more of a comprehensive you know, review of what this is like once I get back. Okay, so it's been a long day. I have a bug covered windshield and we have put 297.8, almost 300 miles on the truck. Fuel economy, 26.3 miles per gallon for this trip. 57.3 miles per hour as an average. It's really crazy how just, you know, relatively small amount of city driving can really bring down your average speed because the vast majority of my driving has been over 70. 345 mile range left on the fuel tank. Uh, right now it's a little more than half a tank. And yeah, this is about what a 300 mile trip would look like in this truck, starting off with a full tank. 26.3 miles per gallon isn't bad. Fuel economy numbers are 28.1, which I think would be the overall average, not accounting for just this one specific trip. I'm uh, very pleased with the fuel economy numbers I'm getting. A little interested in determining the drop in fuel from the tank, considering it was about an eighth of a tank to get down there. Uh, yes, I did encounter some headwind, and you can see that I dropped about a mile per gallon in terms of MPGs on this trip. So, yeah, this, this truck gets really good fuel economy. It really does. Uh, the tank drop is interesting, even considering I still have 343 miles in terms of overall range, which that number is going to drop now that I'm going on city streets where the fuel economy average is going to bring it down. Anyways, that said, this has been really interesting. Um, definitely wanted to kind of keep you guys up to date on what's going on with the fuel economy numbers for this truck. 300 mile trip. So yeah, long-term evaluations of vehicles give you the ability to do stuff like this over and over and over and see how the numbers look, especially when you get to that magical thousand mile break-in period that I'm roughly, you know, 330 miles away from hitting. Um, but yeah, the, the truck is so far performing very well, very comfortable in terms of ride quality. The seat is not my favorite seat. And I know I've emphasized that time and time again. Um, I would definitely say that both the Ford and the Ram have a more comfortable seat. Uh, the seat just still feels really firm. Um, it did not, it did not conform in a way that I thought it would, and, and you know, gradually get better. Because uh, yeah, I'm not too comfortable in this seat. I don't sit, think it's horrible. It's just not as comfortable as some of the other competing trucks I've driven from Ford and Ram. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this little trip with me. Again, about 300 miles. It was fun. And uh, we're definitely going to make more content. A lot of it's going to be based around towing. So if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.